Hi everyone, it's Liv Thims, your human chemistry professor. Today we're going to give a lecture on the thermodynamics of evolution theories of Russian physical chemist Georgi Gladchev, who is noted for his 1997 book, The Thermodynamic Theory of the Evolution of Living Beings. Here's a famous quote from the book, where Gladchev explains that the changes in the Gibbs free energy corresponding to the interactions of people in a society which can be viewed as a complicated thermodynamic system, can be calculated by the measure of the work that went into the building of the structure of that society. Here's a photo of Gladchev and myself discussing human thermodynamics in Chicago in front of the Wrigley Field building on December 16, 2007. Recently, Gladchev sent me a short clip of himself, which we will look at shortly. To situate Gladchev and his evolution theory in the correct perspective, we first need to give a bit of history. Specifically, after 1859, with the publication of English naturalist Charles Darwin's Origin of Species, and after 1865, with the publication of German physicist Rudolf Clausius's Mechanical Theory of Heat, there were two dominant theories said to have bearing on the state of human existence. The first, explaining that human beings were created, or rather synthesized, over long periods of time by a slow gradual process called evolution. The second, explaining that the entire universe is governed by two laws. One, that the energy of the universe is constant. Two, that the entropy of the universe tends to a maximum. These two books resulted in what have come to be known as the Darwinian Revolution and the Carnoan Revolution, or rather thermodynamic revolution. What remains a significant issue in modern times, however, is that these two revolutions have not yet unified as one science but remain incongruent on many points. This revolution incongruency was famously pointed out in 1973 by French human thermodynamicist Roger Kaleolis, who quipped, Clausius and Darwin cannot both be right. Now, on the topic of this infamous quote, some may be quick to conclude that this issue was reconciled long ago. Thermodynamics does not prove evolution wrong, nor does evolution contradict thermodynamics. This, however, is not the case. No one as yet has successfully or rather fully explained Darwin's theory in terms of Clausius's equations. This fact is evidenced by the weekly uploaded evolution versus thermodynamics debate videos to YouTube. Evolution defies the second law of thermodynamics. This last guy to know was making a joke and mocking the people who commonly use in debates the argument that the second law proves that evolution is a defunct theory. In all seriousness, however, for those who do actual research on the topic of evolution and thermodynamics, there are serious contradictions and huge issues to be reconciled. Here's one example from English evolutionary biologist Ronald Fisher. Entropy changes lead to progressive disorganization of the physical world well, evolutionary changes produce progressively higher organization. The first person to seriously dig into the issue of reconciling evolution theory with thermodynamic theory was Belgian chemist Ilya Prigozhin, whose most popular book is the 1984 Order Out of Chaos. Prigozhin, in fact, was so successful with his attempts at reconciliation of thermodynamics with evolution that he received in the 1977 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his non-equilibrium thermodynamics dissipative structures theory. Prigozhin outlined the central message of his argument in his 1977 Nobel lecture, Time Structure and Fluctuations, where he states that thermodynamic equilibrium may be characterized by the minimum of the Helmholtz free energy, defined by F, the free energy, being equal to the energy of the system, less the product of the temperature and the entropy of the system. He then asks, are these types of organizations around us of this nature? It is enough to ask, he says, such a question to see that the answer is negative. Obviously, in a town, in a living system, we have quite a different type of order. To obtain a thermodynamic theory for this type of structure, we have to show that non-equilibrium may be a source of order. Irreversible processes may lead to a new type of dynamic states of matter, which I have termed dissipative structures. 
This was a huge theory for 1977, and by this time, Prigozhin had many followers, and his theory was considered proved beyond doubt. Case closed. Prigozhin's influence is evidenced by his 2010 citation count, which numbers past 4,000 for his book, Self-Organization and Non-Equilibrium Systems, Dissipative Structures to Order Through Fluctuations, which outranks greats such as Sigmund Freud used the first law of thermodynamics in psychology, Nicholas Georgiou Rosian used the second law in economics, or Pierre Teilhard, who incorporated both the first and the second law of thermodynamics into his The Phenomenon of Man. Curiously, in June of 1977, several months before it was announced that Prigozhin had won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, Gladchev was not in agreement with Prigozhin's theory, a theory which he considered to be near mathematical abstractions not applicable to the real world, and in place of this, wrote out his own theory in an article titled On the Thermodynamics of Biological Evolution, published the following year in the journal Theoretical Biology, a theory based on the 1876 chemical thermodynamics work of American engineer Willard Gibbs. Gladchev then sent his theory to Prigozhin to review. Prigozhin, however, rejected Gladchev's theory, stating that it was a theory not applicable to biological evolution. The following table, which is a chronological listing of the main publications on the thermodynamics of evolution, the earliest being the 1922 work of American chemist Alfred Latoka and his contribution to the energetics of evolution, gives an idea as to the sparsity of these types of publications, which owes to their difficulty, and shows the popularity of Gladchev's th evolution theory as compared to Prigozhin's, which has a largely higher citation count. Popularity, however, does not ensure that a theory is correct. Let's take a look at the gist of Gladchev's theory as compared to Prigozhin's. The theory proposed explains the peculiarities of the biological and social evolution on the basis of the use of Gibbs criteria of equilibrium, where G is equal to the enthalpy less the product of the temperature times the entropy of the system, wherein the criterion for the evolution or spontaneous progression of any chemical process is signified by a variation in G being less than or equal to zero, where G is convenient to use when considering biological evolution in terms of thermodynamics because many organisms can only live in a narrow range of temperatures and pressures so that at a first approximation T and P can be considered constant. In comparing the two points of view, we see that Prigozhin feels that evolution cannot be explained on the basis of free energy, whereas Gladchev feels that evolution can be explained on the basis of free energy calculations. In retrospect, without going into further details, in the context of modern human chemical thermodynamics, we can now state clearly that Gladchev was correct, whereas Prigozhin was incorrect. To cut to the chase, we're now going to watch a recently made video clip of Gladchev in Moscow talking about his thermodynamics of biological evolution theory, which views evolution systems in terms of hierarchies upon hierarchies, or within hierarchies, developing over time from the smallest atoms and molecules to the largest human molecules, or rather people. In the background to the video to note, you will see my two-volume textbook, Human Chemistry, a book whose content of which Gladchev and I conversed weekly about during its construction. Uh, good day. I would like to say only some words about my hierarchical thermodynamics. Hierarchical thermodynamics uh, is uh, the study of complex heterogeneous chemical and biological systems at all levels of hierarchy, from small atomic to large human molecular social complexes. These large human molecular social complexes are investigated by famous scientist elite teams in his modern human thermodynamics. Hierarchical thermodynamics is a further development of Gibson theory, and to reason unknown approximation is applied to system of all temporal structural hierarchies. Of real world. Thank you.